here's a rewrite of uh, system talking about the plus and minus the solution to x squared is equal to 4 is plus or minus 2 you need both solutions to be correct so you're saying yes I'm just saying we take square root of x to represent only the positive because if you don't it's not a function yeah for sure if you're talking about functions only 100% right function and square roots ha having two positive out outputs would make there be four numbers the quadratic formula would give us uh, four numbers it would give you true numbers uh, like square root of da, 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 would be two values wouldn't it yeah check this out here now what what system is saying is 100 true when we're talking about functions right so and this comes into play here watch this i'm going to kick it down for you um the, one of the first places we encountered this right let me see if i got a pen that's going to be a little darker better coming out is that better yeah maybe i need a whole new one let's find let's find the pen that's going to be nice and dark <laughs> that's not it let's dump that one oh that's not bad brown we use brown here we'll keep this guy here let me see the red one too oh that's nice that's darker let's use the red one okay now take a look at this thing talking about why a function would not be a function or a relation would not be a function if you had a positive and negative outcome when you took the square root of a number of square root of function right now one of the things that happens in mathematics is we try to manipulate functions change things around to see what happens to them right so just imagine just imagine you had this y is equal to x squared right let's assume we wanted to graph this function right now graph of this function is quadratic we've done a lot of quadratics before or you could just create a table right so let's just create a table right just so for those that want to follow what's going on here you don't have to know about quadratics and the quadratic formula and um, completing the square and stuff like this to be able to graph this so this is just a function right a function is just sort of a relationship but a special type of relationship where for a given x you can only have one y right for a given input you can only have one output and right now we have a y is equal to x squared and the x we consider to be our independent variable it's our input and y is our output right so if we want to graph this function to see what it looks like all we got to do is put in an input and get an output right put it in get it out so let's put something in for x let's put in zero for x and all you do you say okay y is equal to zero squared what's zero squared is zero okay so that's a point on the graph zero zero Boop. let's put another input one when x is one we get one squared we get one so when x is one y is one x is one y is one right let's put another point x is two right well if you put two for x you get two squared that's four so when x is two two three four right oops let's graph this better so we're here right let's put in three when x is three you get three squared you get nine Ay, caramba. that's four five six seven eight nine we're up here right we're off the board so let's just graph this right here's what it looks like on this side oh, 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 oh. goes up like that right well okay we've got a feeling for what the graph looks like on this side of the y-axis right because this is this is your y-axis this is your x right that's where your x x this way y this way well let's see what it'll be if x is negative one what's y when x is negative one so you plug in negative one for x right so you're going to get negative one squared which is one. Oh, one one again so one 
And if you plug in negative 2, you're going to get negative 2 squared. You're going to get 4. Oh, so that's a mirror of that, right? Cool. Hopefully that's symmetrical enough. Symmetrical enough, right? So that's a graph of your base quadratic function, which is the parabola, which opens up like this. Right? Cool enough. Now, what do mathematicians do? in their infinite insanity they go hey what will happen if we switch the x and the y here doo -doo 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 -doo. switch them up switch them up what do you mean switch them up well make the y an x and the x a y why for the hell of it let's see what happens okay let's do it so what happens if we do this fine let's I want to do a different color so we know it's the different stuff. Green, brown, find. Boop. Take. Oops. Take. <laughs> I don't want to write all capitals. Take inverse uh, y. Here. Take the inverse of it, which means flip the x and the y around. So what you get is x is equal to y squared. Flip the x and the y. That's what an inverse means. What it also means is a reflection about the line y equals x. So you're reflecting a line. I should make this one, give it a little curve, right? Because it is a parabola after all. Right? Give it a little curve. Give it a little curve. Right? So when you take the inverse of a function, what you're really doing is you're doing this. You're taking, you're taking a function and flipping it about the line y equals x, right? Y is equal to x. Okay, you're flipping it about that line. So, okay, let's do a little algebra on this. Well, if you're going to do a little algebra, you're going to get y by itself y is your function y is your independent variable x is your dependent variable. oh sorry y is your dependent variable and it's dependent on x so you want to get y by itself right so you take the square root of both sides so y is equal to square root of x right but what we talked about was square root has to be plus and minus right so square root of anything is plus and minus now remember we don't have a number in there yet right so do we have to write in plus and minus here? Not really, because we haven't taken the square root of x yet, right? It's just a variable, right? By definition, you take the square root, it's plus and minus, right? So let's leave it like that. Not, let's not put plus and minus there, okay? Now, if this is what's going on, and you're taking the inverse of this function, which means you're reflecting about the line y equals x, which means all you're gonna do is flip the x and the y's. You're switching the numbers, right? If you're gonna switch the numbers, let's graph it. Let's create a table. Well, if we're gonna create a table, all we're gonna do is flip these guys. So the x becomes a y. So 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2. And the y becomes an x. 0, 1, 4, 9, 1, 4. Okay. We can test this if you want, right? What's the square root of 0? Put 0 in here. Well, square root of 0 is 0. What's the square root of 1? Square root of 1 is 1. What's the square root of 2? Well, square root of 2 is just square root of 2. Right? What's the square root of... Um, oh, I'm putting this in the wrong the wrong way. Check this out. The square root has to go here. So over here, uh, y is equal to, no, no, that was correct. Y is equal to square root of x. So square root of x is equal to 1. Square root of 2 is equal to square root of 2. Square root of 3 is equal to square root of 3. Square root of negative 1. Oh, no, no, I'm already put in the here square root of negative one square root of one could be negative one 
and square root of two, square root of four, look at this, look at this, I'm messing this up. Four is two square root of nine. Did I confuse you guys enough? Square root of one is negative one. Square root of four is can also be negative two, right? I don't usually do it this way. I'm trying to push it, right? So square root of four, you put four in for x, square root of four is two, right? But it's not just two, it's plus and minus two. So instead of putting minus here, I'm gonna put it here, plus and minus, right? Square root of nine is not just three, it's plus and minus three. Square root of one, well, it was one and negative one, so it's plus and minus one, right? So we don't need these bottom guys, we can just take them out, right? I hope that's clear. I sort of mucked it up in the process, right? Crafter, how you doing? Hope you're doing well. So check this out. What does this mean? That means if we're gonna graph this, when X is zero, Y is zero. So we're here. When X is one, Y is plus and minus one. When X is one, Y can be here or it can be here. When X is four, three, four, y can be plus and minus two here and here, right? And then nine is plus or minus three. We're off the board again, so let's graph this. Right? Okay. We snacking on anything today? I got the, I got some grapes. They're pretty good grapes. That's some that are loose here. They're really nice grapes. Just a little. I had a good breakfast. Let's see our grapes. I'm just gonna focus on my grapes. There you go. Really yummy grapes. Oh, that one looks like it's got a little. Well done. Oh no, it's just the end of it. Check it out. So it's pretty yummy. All right. As well as learning how to calculate the by hand. No, I would not recommend <laughs> high definition grapes. High definition grapes, right? So take a look at this thing. This is what the inverse means of this function, right? Now remember, I keep on calling the function, but you can think of it as a relation if you want. So if you take this function, this relation. And take its inverse that means switch the x and y around switch the x and y around means you're taking this function and flipping it along this you get this now here's where the problem comes in a system saying the plus and minus if we say this is a function then its inverse for it to stay a function means that it has to pass the vertical line test, which means for a given x value, it can't have two different y's. For a given x value, x is equal to one, it can't have plus or minus one as an answer. For x is equal to four, you can't have plus two and negative two. You can't have an x pointing to two different y's. That's what it means for it to be a definition of function, right? If the question was, this is a function, then you have to decide if you're gonna kill the top or kill the bottom of this, depending on your system. Usually you kill the bottom and you say, oh, which means you're killing all the negatives. Oops, all the negative values, okay. Which means the inverse of this function is going to be this function and this function looks like that so you don't have the negative results when you take the square root of a number however if i said find the inverse of this relation right then if it's i define it as a relation that means this can be a relation that means the negative numbers can remain, which also means that these numbers 
would still be there. Okay. So it's all about definition. It's all about definition. Okay. Usually in high school mathematics, you're dealing with functions. So you end up eliminating the bottom. But let's assume you have this. Let's see if I was green pens doing. What if you had this? Y is equal to negative square root of X. If Y is equal to negative square root of X, then your graph would no longer be the top guy. It would be the bottom guy. Because the square root of X, you would define to be positive and you're taking the negative of it. So that part would be the legit answer. Okay. Does that clear things up? Is that okay, system? Or anybody else that's uh, wanted to know what this is about, right? It's, it's interesting. It really digs down deep into the essence of what it is that we're doing, right? Most people don't appreciate this. And system, thanks for bringing it up, by the way. Um, it's important to have a visual of what it is really that we're doing and why it is that we're doing it, right? How does the syntax work? And it all, it's all about the word, right? Function. Function. Oops, function. Y is a function. That would mean take inverse of y, which is a function. Right? If I say this is not a function, whoop, or if you don't specify, right? Uh, I think it's legit to put it that way. It really depends on the teachers as well and the curriculum. Like that's the kicker with this, right? It, it's really dependent on how you're learning it, right? But the syntax, the math, is it's just there. It's just there. It, it like that's the thing with mathematics. Uh, a lot of, unfortunately, they make special rules in math to apply to a certain system, and people think those special rules are universal, and you can do that. In this language of mathematics whenever you come across it but that's not true because that applies only to that system right so for example when you're doing uh, calculations if you're finding maximum area the maximum area in general right your graphs for maximum area when it's quadratic you go from here to here right you end it there your domain and range right why because you're still solving for quadratics, but you can't have a negative area when you go down this way, right? You can't have a negative area, so you eliminate anything below the x-axis, okay? Because you can't have a negative value for that, right? That's the definition of the system. However, for quadratics, you can have negative numbers, right? That's, they're infinite, okay? I hope that helps out. I, lo I love talking about this stuff because it gets into the nitty gritty of what it is that's going on.